What's up guys? How is everyone doing this afternoon? Uh, so we're gonna do something a little bit different today. So today we actually got the Overwatch League trading card game. Uh, well, really trading cards that came out today uh, from Upper Deck. And I know there's been kind of a lot of confusion about what exactly this stuff actually entails. And I figured... Uh, you know, right out of the gate, one of the biggest questions that people are going to have is, are these cards physical? And the answer to that is yes, but also no. <laughs> uh, so, basically, when you go to the Upper Deck websites, they have what they call e-packs, which are basically digital cards. And here you can see I am on the store right now. Uh, so if you scroll down, you can see that the Overwatch League stuff is listed here. Uh, now the e-packs are digital cards, but you do have ways to earn physical cards. Uh, so if you guys are wondering, well, how much do these cards actually cost? Uh, I'll be honest, they're actually pretty damn expensive for cards in general. Uh, like, even if you buy bigger things, you're not actually saving that much money. Packs are 4 bucks, the booster box is 94 and if you want, like, an entire case, which... I don't know who has, like, $1,120 to throw around. I mean, you could do that if you want, uh, but it basically gives you an idea of what you can expect if you buy each specific thing. Uh, now that being said, basically what's going to happen is, with the e-packs, you have a digital collection. Uh, you also have ways of trading with other people as well, if you're looking for specific cards, which I'll definitely get into. So, when you're opening these cards, basically you're going to notice a couple of things. You are going to have an icon on these cards, which will usually be either orange or gray, and that will be found in the bottom left-hand corner, and that will uh, denote whether or not that card is physical or physical pendant. Now, if there is no icon, that means that that card is a digital only. So basically, if you have like a stockpile of the same digital card, what you're able to do is you can combine those cards, which with the Overwatch League set, if you collect nine of the same card, you can combine them to get a rare parallel of that same card, which will then be redeemable as a physical card. Uh, so if you're looking for any sort of specific player in particular that you want to get uh, a physical card for, the best thing to do is to just utilize the on-site trade and to get extra copies of the base card to combine them. But with this set, I know there's 125 cards altogether, uh, whether it's players, maps, uh, season 1 highlights, team checklists, they also have like autograph cards. Uh, ranging anywhere from like one to three autographs on a card. They also have uh, Fragment memorabilia, which is usually jersey type cards as well And I know there's some like insert sets uh, between like game rivals league leaders stage winners and things like that So uh, I did actually buy a box earlier today, so I figured what is a breakdown going to be? Because that's really the biggest question that I have when it comes to digital and also physical. Because I know that not everything I'm going to get is going to be a physical card. So this is what we are trying to figure out. Is this really worth the money? I honestly have no idea. So what's interesting about this is... It's digital first and then physical second, as opposed to the other way around, which is something that we've kind of been accustomed to uh, with other, like, trading card games. Like, I'll use Pokemon, for instance, because that's, like, the easiest thing to compare this to. Uh, so, in Pokemon, if you buy, like, a, a card pack or a booster box, basically with every pack you are getting a, a promo code that you can redeem for a card pack in their online trading card game. Obviously, that is not the case here, because we are starting with digital cards and then trying to obtain the phys physical cards or just getting enough digital cards of the same type in order to get something that we can redeem as a physical card. So what does that mean? Well, it means that overall, 
acquiring the physical cards is going to be a lot harder than if it was physical first. Uh, but in the same sense, it also means that the physical cards are going to be more collectible and worth more money. So, I, I'm still kind of uncertain about how I feel about all of this. Obviously, this is something that's brand new. I'm not very familiar with the Upper Deck E-Pack system as a whole. Uh, but I figured, you know, we're going to open up our 24 packs. We'll see what we get. And I will either bitch and gripe about it on the podcast later, or we'll get some good stuff. Either way, I am really anxious to see what this is going to bring. So let's go ahead and jump into our packs. Alright. So we have one box. I'm assuming this is just going to open them one at a time, because that would be really confusing otherwise. Alright. So, of course, like, with the EPAC system as well, you do get achievements. I know they have, uh, I think icons. I think you can get, like, specific, like, rewards, too, by being, like, the first X, you know, whatever people out of, uh, you know, everyone to earn specific things, which I know that they detailed at length. But I'm not going to get into all of that, because there's a lot that's kind of going in there. <sighs> okay. So we earned badges. Okay, let's close off of that. Alright, so we have 24 packs all together. Alright, let's see what we get. We got a highlight one, okay. Okay, let me... There we go, then we can see it a little bit better. Alright, moving on. So we're basically looking in the lower left-hand corner for uh, the the decal there to see whether or not we can redeem it as physical. And I know, I'm pretty sure, like, later on when we go to our collection, it will actually give us a breakdown of what cards are digital, uh, basically, like, the rarity and things like that as well. So that's something to keep an eye on. So we've got Jehan, SBB. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think, I'm pretty sure, like, the rare ones are always going to be the memorabilia and the the signature ones as well. And Damon, no longer in the league. Which is going to be a common thing, probably, because this is for the inaugural season. Of course, NYXL bombing in the playoffs. I mean, what else is new? Another person no longer in the lead. In the league. <laughs> Alright, so it's basically gonna display them one at a time, which is fine. Got Mickey. I should probably keep track of like how many of the rare cards we're getting to as we're kinda doing this. Oh, we're, we are able to flip them over, too, as we go along, too, so you guys can kind of get an idea of everything that is, uh, that is on the front and the back. Like, I know for, like, the player ones, we should get, like, stats on the back. There's the Sage Winners, there's an XL. This is for the Stage 2 Championship. Zephyr, of course, now on... Florida Mayhem, uh, probably getting replaced. More on that later, because uh, Mayhem have made a ton of sign-ins today. But you can see we do have the... Let me zoom in here. You can see the average per 10 minutes of, against basically the rest of the league uh, in, in regards to the stats. So you get a little biography for each player as well. I just want all the soul cards. That, that's all I want. Speaking of soul, there's Miro. Of course, now he's streaming with Gen G Esports. <laughs> I 
Here's another uh, repeat, because that's a stage 2 one for NYXO. Okay, now obviously you guys heard that. Uh, that means that that is a, one of the rarer cards, because it is one glowing red. Just to tell you, this is one of the, the Jersey cards. I wish there was a way for us to, like, rotate the card in here, too, but there's not. Outside of just the way that it's just portrait right now. Okay, so that's our first. And now we're keeping... Uh, keeping with the Elder Valiant, apparently, because we got Custa. This was before he was too big brain to, uh, to play 3-3. This is probably going to be. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'd say like this is going to be the last season we're going to see Cool Matt. I'm not very confident that we're going to be seeing him going into the next season, just based off of his overall play as of late. All right, so we got one. So that was one of the Jersey ones. Kareev, okay, that's still current. Okay, here is one of the solo uh, autograph cards. So each one is going to be basically marked on this side, so there are, there, there's basically like solo, I think there's duo and then trio for the autograph cards. Alright, so that's our second one. Silk Thread. Also no longer in the lead. Janice. Who got shipped off to Washington, and now he's the 20th ranked main tank in the league. Which is less, by the way. That's out of 20. In, in case you guys aren't keeping track. <laughs> Is that, is that really a highlight? Like, when Houston goes 2-0 to start a stage? Does that really need a card, Ed? What, what, what do you think? I mean, they're 2-1 right now. Do you think they're gonna get another one for, for their win against the Shock? I think that seems pretty likely. There's a Frenchman himself, Unko. <laughs> they should get a card for every one that they get. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> I mean, there, ha there hasn't been that many. Um, I guess for Washington, then, they should probably just get nothing. Like, they shouldn't even just be in the set at all. I do like that they also keep, like, the actual uh, team skins for the character that they play as well. That's nice. Guido. Not not the uh, not the sole one I wanted, but you know, it is what it is. Another person not in the league. There's another Outlaws highlight. Beating Philadelphia Fusion. You know, I think this this season. Uh, that one would not warrant the card, based on how Philadelphia has played. It's it's really weird to see just how impacted certain teams are with the current meta. And Philly is definitely at the worst end of it. Okay, so here's one that's listing some of the top three healing leaders. I'm assuming that's also based on the average per 10 minutes as well. So if I fl flip this over, we should get an idea. Oh, it actually lists more, so it shows us the top 15 overall with the averages. Okay. Another person no longer in the Overwatch League. You got Numlocked. 
who's uh, competed in contenders nowadays. Alright, let's move on to the next. So we're still at we're still at two rares at this point. Uh, Fearless, he's with Team CC now, uh, since he joined the academy team for Shanghai Dragons. Let's see, Hot Bow Cores, you know, is with Guanjo Charge now. Architect with the uh, the hug. That is a wholesome card. Objective time leaders. You have Hot Bud near near in the top there. I think that's pretty interesting considering how much he was uh, flexing off of Diva at certain points. Let's see who who else we have in the top fifteen here. Got Kagiri, Mickey. Coco. You know, we, we got a couple of Florida Mayhem players on here, too, which is kind of surprising. Especially when I consider it, like, they probably didn't even complete that many maps. Who would have guessed? We got a rare Muma card. I, I don't know what makes this one a rare card. Just what I wanted, a Rare Outlaws card. What? I'm trying to, what makes this one a rare card? Is it just a marking? Like there's something like marked right here. I'm assuming that's what it is. I don't know. That, that's, that's probably what it's from. Cause it is numbered there. Another person no longer in the league. Feels bad, man. One of the OGs. Then again, a lot of the OGs have kind of fallen on the wayside. Or just haven't played at all. Speaking of OGs, there is OG. Man, the timing of that was impeccable. <laughs> Poco. Is it going to tell us how many self-destruct kills he got? Of course not. It's not going to tell us that. That's the one set I wanted to see. I do find it interesting, too. Like, when I flip it, I can see what the next card is. That kind of defeats the purpose. Oh, there's another soul card. We are getting closer and closer to the, uh, the full roster. Ah, yes, another Outlaws player. One of their many tracers. We're just waiting on the, the Mendokusai card, which is probably just going to be like a picture of a bench. Top three players. Okay. What is this based off of? Is it based on popularity? Like, obviously, Fisher's going to be on there. And sure, first on there. How do they determine the top three? Okay, just seeing like what all they have on these. So season sets, just like some of the other cards. Snello, of course. Uh, on a two-way contract, currently playing with Fusion University, who are going to be making their Contenders Korea debut here against Runaway in about a week? Yeah, I think it's like June 25th, so that's coming up. We'll talk about that later. So not too much from that one. It's your boy, Mecco. Who's been getting subbed out a lot for SBB since NYXL has been running a ton of Sombra lately. I don't even want to look at this card because I know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> D 
damn you, New York! Sweep in my dynasty. It's an AKM signature card. Of course, one of the other Frenchmen. Okay, another player no longer in the league. We kid who was playing a lot of projectile for the dynasty. Probably, I mean, honestly, I think he probably looked best on Shunkrad in season one. But you know, dynasty definitely had quite a few issues last season, more particularly with their substitutions and anything. Which is weird, because now they're, like, throwing out, like, 12 people. So it's crazy to see, like, how much better, but also how much more they're substituted now. I don't know, it's kind of it's kind of weird. There's Mono. Probably still top three main tank in the league at this point. Alright, so that's our third one. Uh, so we've got in... One jersey, two autograph cards. Zushu, also no longer in the league. Like most of the 0140 Shanghai Dragons. Swoosh! Also no longer in the league. Uh, I know he was coaching in Contenders. I... I'm trying to think. I don't think he's actually on a team right now. At least on Staffin. Got Fate, who got traded to the Mayhem. We'll see if his playtime's going to see any uh, decrease here in a couple of weeks. So shout out the, uh, the Barclay Center for the Grand Finals. Let hair low. SBB rocking it. What else we got? There's the Kane himself, Baby Bay. Okay. Here, here's the thing. Like, shocks with sweep of Houston. Okay, at what point in the season was this? Because I know at the start, Houston had some pretty good map pools, so they were able to just play Drake right a lot and Widow, and then they did good. I'm assuming this was during that time. Okay, no, it was... Okay, stage four. Okay, that's why. It's because they held them to one objective point in a four-map series. That's pretty damn good. Striker, uh, he got traded to the shock. Unfortunately, you know we've not really been seeing Striker at all this season. Uh, hopefully, FTPS ever come back. Civil Striker, don't hold your breath though. It's not looking very promising. Okay, there's another Met card, Junker Town. See, like with something like this for the map specific stuff, I want something that has like the map records, like, the fastest objective time, or most damage output, most healing, things like that on that specific map, rather than just, you know, kind of like a general overview of what the map is. Obviously, we know it's an Australian map, which we're going to note on this card. Another another outlaws one, Ed. Like I I think they're trying to tell me something. So it's cool, Matt, and your boy Rockus. Okay, so just like the uh, the signature ones, the frag the jersey fragment cards can have anywhere from one to three on the high end. Um, the the three one is obviously the rarest out of the three. And one obviously you know the least rare between them, but. Two, not so bad. A 
is Carpe. The alien himself, Sinatra. This was probably his look after he was teabagging someone, if I had to guess. Yeah, this was one of the more monumental moments, too, when the Fusion uh, basically upset NYXL to reach the Grand Finals against London. The stress servers are down already. I can't I can't say I'm too surprised, Ed. How, how long has they been up? Has that been up all day? I honestly haven't even looked. They weren't stressed enough. Apparently not. Another stage championship one for New York Excels here. This was uh, when Void was not that impressive when he first came into the league. Okay, so it was still pretty recently then. Altrain, another uh, former Overwatch League player, no longer in the league. There's another one of the OGs, Taimu, uh, who... Is wanting to play, probably not going to play though. I don't I don't imagine Jane and Tikati are gonna throw him in. Or Arrow, I guess too. Technically they're all there. So we got people that probably want to play that we just haven't seen. Hashtag free Fraggy. I honestly don't expect it to happen at any point. Y you think he's gonna be Diva Moo? I don't know, stranger things have happened. We've already got Tank Moo. We haven't seen Diva Moo. You know what? If Zumba can come off of the bench and just hawk dive everyone into oblivion, so can Time Moo. Lippero, the flex god himself. The Dinkser. It's another Grand Finals card. Boombox, who, I mean, honestly... You know, Boombox definitely popped off a lot more last season compared to the current season. He's kind of, like, fallen... I'm not gonna say, like, he's fallen behind a lot of players, but it just seems like he hasn't had the same impact in the current meta. Okay, so this one looks like a foil card. This is one of the all-star ones, too. I like how they had to make it really obvious that it was a rare card, though. Like, it couldn't just be the border. It has to flash and also grow in size, like, ten times. <laughs> Basically. Okay, this card is very confusing to me. Because it's talking about how Pine dominates with Widowmaker in a New York win, but on the front, it's of the LA Gladiators. That does not add up. Like, I know it was against the Gladiators, but why would they show the win for the Gladiators as the front of the card, rather than just a shot of Pine on Widow, or just Pine? I don't know. Maybe I'm just griping, it just seems weird to me that they would do that. Okay, Blizzard World. I think we've only seen, like, I think four or five of the map cards at this point. I 
Eris Manatin, who of course was on uh, Mayhem Academy this year, uh, who have since disbanded, but that that roster is basically still together, uh, and they are playing under as I want to say Revival in Contenders North America, and Apply is with them too, so they pretty much kept all of that Academy team intact, they're just not an Academy team anymore. There's Ark the Undyan, uh, who can't say that anymore since he's on Washington. There's your MVP, one of your MVPs, Prophet. This was well before Dante tilted super. That is a lot of yellow. Almost too much yellow. was when London basically just decimated all of LA. Those were good times. Look at that, look at that arrogant smirk. That is Fisher in a nutshell there. Okay, so this is basically like the same card that we got prior, but you know, this one doesn't have the mark in to make it rare. See a trend here. Is this gonna be another LA Gladiators card? Nope. So we got half of the Gladiators back. Okay, that's a Sage One Title One. Dorado, arguably the most spirited map. Uh, I, I I think the most notable moment on Dorado all of last season was probably when New York Excelsior were attacking and had like a minute left, and then they decided to just completely change up their comp when they're trying to attack the final objective, which didn't give them enough time to build any ult charge, and they ended up losing. And I know they threw away alts to actually make said swaps, Feels good, man. There's there's the goal. It's weird too, like some of the cards have different backgrounds too for the teams too. Like, you have some that actually have, like, the team logo, and then uh, there's other ones that are just, like, the players on the stage. Thank you, Mr. Logix. We just, we don't get to see him. We need to see him back, especially with the McCree buffs, like... Make it happen. Okay, so this is a team-specific one? We haven't seen any of these yet. What's on the back of these ones? Okay, so, okay, these are the checklist cards. This will tell you, like, their full roster, all of the player numbers, what their role is. So I know we've got in Damon, Zushu, Fearless, and Altrian. So we still got a long way to go for Shane High. There's Boink wondering why he got subbed in. K 
Damsu always looks like super serious. Compared to some of the other players. Here's I Remix, uh, who is now with. Is it... I was gonna say Meta Sky Foxes, but I know that's not right. I think it's with Revival now, aka X Mayhem Academy. It's one of the many Battle of LAs that we saw in, in uh, Season 1. Ocean. Okay, we're, we're hitting the flex supports now. Okay, now just give us another tree hunt card after this, and we'll be good. Ah, oh, they ruined it. Of course, it's a it's a Dallas card. This is when they finally beat London. Since London pretty much had their number. For most of that season. Okay, here's a checklist for the fusion. Alright. We've got in Dayfly, Boombox, Hotba, Carpe, Poco, and Snillo. We're halfway there. We're definitely not getting the other six, I can tell you that much. I think it's funny, they even gave Sato a card, even though, you know, he was suspended for, like, three stages. So, shout out the Grand Finals of your eventual champions, the London Spitfire. The boop god himself, Toby. Gotta be getting close to the Dynasty checklist um, at this point. Alright, so we got the Shock one now. Alright, let's see. Uh, I know we've got in Baby Bay, Deck, Sinatra, IDDQD, Nefix, Dante, and Architect. So we're 7 of 12 on that one. Still seems pretty unlikely. There's SPP, when he actually played something that isn't Sombra, or the bench. The world's hungriest diva player, Fury. So I wonder, like, how frequently they're going to be releasing these sets. Um, because, you know, like, it's... June, we're in stage three of the second season. I don't know if we're going to see this, the second season cards, like, towards the start of season three, or if it's going to be, like, a similar, like, window of release. before the match took place. I have a feeling like this is the same look that a Julius has when he realizes, Ugh, I gotta play Brick again. It's just really concentrated on holding M1. Okay, here's a London checklist. You'll notice this is a much smaller roster. Which is interesting, because this is after they made the cuts. So there had to have been at one point where they said, okay, this is the roster that we are going to be running with. Or the cards that we're going to be running with, since it doesn't have all of the KDP members on this checklist. This was after they cut five players, essentially. 
Uh, so we've seen Prophet, we have Fury, and Bedosian. Um, so we're not even halfway on that one. Of course, that was the opening day when we saw Dallas Fuel going up against the Soul Dynasty. Basically, Envy versus Lunatic High. And it was the dynasty that came out on top. Here you can see the LA Sadiators after they lost. Alright, there's another soul card. That's kooky. Ah, uh, back up main tank. Okay, so frag leaders. This is probably going to be kills per 10 minutes. Or maybe not. That, I don't know. That seems kind of... It's very peculiar that there's so many, like, supports on there. Let alone main supports. I should specify that. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's Zenyatta players on here. But, like, you look at that, it's, like, pretty split between support and just off-tank players. That's very interesting. Do you have Mayhem's number one fan, Avast? Okay, here's the Uprising trick list. There's a, yeah, a pretty noticeable person missing from this, for obvious reasons. But that was also probably after the cutoff point, since he was already gone at that point. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're not getting this one either. Uh, we've gotten a vast mistakes striker. I think those are the three that we've gotten, so that one's, that one's not going to happen. Alright, we got two more. This was super before, you know, we had Somber, it's just hacking him left and right. Pluppy. Another one of the OGs. Man, you gotta feel bad for Otto, man, having to be stuck with Washington. Oof. There's the keen pin himself, the keen of boosters, Sato. All right, this should be the last one. This is probably during Sinatra's debut. Of course, it talks about his salary of 150k. Alright, we got a Valiant checklist. Let's see how we're doing on this one. We've got in Finzi, Agilities, Soon, Custa, Numlocked, and Kareev. So we're not doing too bad on that one, but... You know, so many of these teams came in with 12-man rosters, so it's gonna make it really hard to fill out the checklist. Okay, Shock Top 3 players. Uh, well, it's pretty obvious when, you know, some of their players just weren't even 18, so they weren't even eligible to be voted in there. Just raining flex supports again. Oh, here we go. Dynasty checklist. Alright, so we've got in Miro, Jehan... Zephyr, Gato, Kuki, Fleta, we we were actually really close on, on the Dynasty. I think we're only missing two of those, if I'm not mistaken. I know we definitely don't have Munchkin. I don't remember us getting Zunba either. I think those are I think those are the two that we're missing. Alright. So now that we've done that, if we go into our collection, we should be able to see like a breakdown of what we have. Uh, 
Okay, here, let's see. Alright. So let me... Alright, this is what we got our breakdown. So we got two of the memorabilia cards. Uh, those are the jersey ones. The autographs we got two of. Uh, we got one of the... We got like AKM, and I know the other one was one of the duo signature ones. Uh, that Muma card was serial numbered, so that's why that one was rare. So outside of that, uh, you know, you can see your digital breakdown. So we have 122 cards that are digital only. Uh, a lot of those we can combine because we do have duplicates. We have 26 that we can redeem as physical cards, which is why they have this mark. So to give everyone an idea of like what we can actually do. Okay, so we got our rare Muma card. See, this is the thing I don't like. Like on here, like it should still highlight the rare cards, I feel like. I know you can still technically like sort it by the attribute, but I prefer the rare cards to still be marked on here. So basically, like, with this too, like, I'm able to transfer these to other people as well. Um, I want to see... Let's let's go back really quick. Let's, let's see how we can combine things. And it tells us, like, how many of each thing that we have. So if we click on something... Looks like we only have one of a vast. I'm just trying to see if it, like, actually lets us know how many of each item that we have. Because, like, we're seeing the card number. Okay, here we go. We can actually sort it by how many we have. Here, let's go the other way. I think we don't have any duplicates, if I'm being honest. Because this should tell us how many we have. See, because that one's a one. No, we're not going to have any duplicates. Which isn't too surprising. Uh, but basically, like, the other thing that we can do is, like, if we're looking for certain cards... We can go in here. Uh, okay, let's let's just see what this looks like. So, let's say we want... Oh, okay, this is going to be annoying because we're going to have to filter this. Overwatch League. Alright. So we can sort it by... By teams. Wow, holy crap, there are so many. Okay, now let's let's zoom in here. This is the part that worries me. Look at this number. Digital only. With how many variants there are. That is staggering. What the heck? Alright, let's... I want to see if, like, do they actually have, like, autograph cards for every single player in the league? Let's, uh, let's sort it by team as well. Yeah, it looks like they do have it for every, every single person. Jan actually is a couple. He has one that has like the the jersey fragment. I 
Okay, so this is basically gonna tell me like who has one up for trade. I'm trying to see how this works exactly. Just so we can do this next example. I don't want to start a trade. But it does give you guys an idea. It's just kind of weird, like, you can't just click on, you know, the, the card from that person and then for it to automatically pop up the trade window. So that's going to be something that we're going to have to get used to. Um, so, like, outside of that, like, the other thing that I'm kind of perplexed by is the fact that, like, there's no app, like, app for this at all. Like, it's all web-based, so you have to go to upperdeckepac.com and, of course, register uh, from there. Like, they, they don't have any sort of, like, smartphone app that you can just pull up your digital collection or anything like that. So, it, it does feel, like, kind of dated in a sense, so I'm curious to see whether or not they are going to go that route in the future. So all in all, like, we didn't get a terrible pull. Uh, we'll definitely have to compare it to, like, what it would say in the shop. So if we go back here... Okay, so on average... They're talking about two autograph, two jersey, and an all-star. So we got the two memorabilia, we got the two autographs, uh, we got the, the MoMA cards, that was an extra one. And we did get an all-star one as well. So it looks like we got slightly above average, but not that much more. Yeah, that's the thing, Ed. Like, you look at the, the price point, like, it's very minuscule of a discount. It's not, It's probably, honestly, not even 1%. Like, it's, it's kind of crap. Because normally, like, when you're buying in bulk, you should get a discount. I mean, that's how it's always been with cards in general. But, like, you're basically, like, saving, like, a buck forty, like, something like that. If you buy a box, as opposed to just buying 24 packs individually. Which is just awful. Now... I, I, I'm really curious, like, I want to compare this to, like, in one of the other... One of the other ones. Well, this is going to be the only esports title, so I can't use that for reference. I have Euro League cards. <laughs> I don't think that's a good comparison, we need, like, an actual major sport. That's the other thing, too, like, I have to remember, like, Tops is their other, other, like, competitor who probably have some of the more notable sets. I just want something that's just, like, a normal pack. This is not actually helping. Oh well, we can't find anything that's a similar value to try to compare to see, like, if they actually get a similar, like, crap discount for something. I mean, that's slightly better of a value, but, like, it's still... It's still not that much of a discount, even with the boxes. Huh, interested. Alright, well anyways, I figured 
Uh, I'll just show you guys kind of like the ropes for this stuff, and you guys are looking at uh, purchasing packs, of course, just go into the store. Uh, you can scroll down, it'll be like the third thing listed down here. Of course, you know, the price points are not that great, uh, as you guys can tell. I mean, four bucks for a pack, especially for something that's primarily digital, is pretty steep overall. Um, we'll see whether or not this is just Upper Deck's plan in the long run. Like, I would hope at some point that they're just going to figure out, like, hey, like, we can make more money by just physically releasing the cards as opposed to just doing the digital platform as the priority. But for now, I'm going to leave it here. Thanks again for hanging out for our unboxing well it's not really an unboxing it's more of a more of an opening of digital cards and uh i guess i'll figure out what cards i'm going to put up for trade which ones i'm going to keep as uh physical cards moving forward thanks for heading out and i will see you guys in a couple of hours for our variety overwatch podcast later on tonight at 7 p.m central time that of course being heroes never die i'll see you guys then take care